for our season of prayer tonight. Um, the prayer focus would be for us to have a prayer life, to contemplate God's Word, and to read His Word daily. Let me read in the book of James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts in the whole mind. And I'm also reading in the New White Manuscript, page 92, 1901. It says, Draw nigh by prayer. Draw nigh to God, and He will draw nigh to you. Draw nigh to Him by prayer, by contemplation, by reading His Word, when He draws nigh to you, He lifts up for you His standard against the enemy. Let us take courage, for the enemy cannot pass this standard. And in the book of Review and Herald, December 3, 1889, it says, Breaking Satan's Power. The soul that loves God loves to draw strength from Him by constant communion with God. When it becomes the habit of the soul to converse with God, the power of the evil one is broken. For Satan cannot abide near the soul that draws nigh unto God. So you will be given two minutes to pray. And there will be, um, before you given two minutes to pray, there will be preparatory song. And after you pray for two minutes, there will be concluding song. And I will conclude the prayer for the season of prayer. So shall we kneel?
at this moment of time, O oh Lord, you would like to ask that you help us to experience your presence in the midst of us. We would plead, O oh Lord, that you help us to seek you, O oh Lord, with all our heart, with all our soul, with all our mind and our strength. Help us, your heavenly Father, to worship you in spirit and in truth. We'd like to plead, O oh God, for the leading of your Holy Spirit that all of us will be guided into the true Heavenly Father and help us that we may be able to learn and understand, able to discern your message tonight as your servant would speak, O oh God, all about Isaiah's calling, Pastor Ismael Kabasa. I ask, O oh Lord, that you anoint his sleep, O oh God, that he may be able to speak your will and may all of us, O oh God, we be um, given, O oh Lord, the spiritual bread tonight. And I ask, O oh God, that may all of us would focus our attention to you, prepare our hearts and our minds. We thank you, your Heavenly Father, for such an assurance that you will bless us tonight. For in Jesus' name we pray and ask all these things.
who will warn these neighbors and who will warn your relatives in this country. That night I cried and knelt to the Lord, Lord, it is indeed you are calling me into the ministry. <laughs> so I packed my things and traveled going to PUC then, European Union College, and take enrolled in the Bachelor of Arts Philosophy in Religion. History of Arts, Philosophy and Religion. My first salary, I gave a little portion to my father with the presence of my mother. And I told them I only I can only give this amount because you have dedicated me in the ministry. <laughs> I cannot promise the big amount financial help that I promised to you because I only received this amount. You know, the response of my father and my mother. My son, the happiest moment we are enjoying is to see you and hear you preaching in the pulpit. Oh, yes. So, I was relieved that the happiest moment for them is to see me, hear me preaching the gospel of God. God is seeking for the best response when He called us. Are we giving Him the best response? I will consider Isaiah and his calling and how he responded to the Lord this evening. God called Isaiah in the time when Israel was in deteriorating in their spiritual condition. It was dark in the spiritual level of the Israelites at that point of time. And God wanted to call an individual, a prophet whom he will use as instrument of bringing his people to God. And the response of Isaiah when God called him, he responded to God the best response. Lord, Yeremai sent me. Why Yeremai sent me is the best response for God's call. First, Yeremai is an expression of an instrument of God allowing God for him to experience a transformation. When God calls us, He wanted to transform our lives. I would like to read chapter 6, verses 5 to 7. We know the background of the story. Then said I, Woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for mine eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a light coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongs prop, prop of the altar, and he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this a touch thy lips and thy iniquity is taken away in thy sin parts. Six here that when God called Isaiah, he recognized his unworthiness. He recognized his sinfulness. He said, My lips, I have an unclean lips. I am a man of unclean lips. There are also administrators now who were in the past heavenly buildings. But by the rich grace of God, when they responded to the call of God, 
God's grace transformed them. Amen? It says here, I am a man with unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. When he turned into the temple, and he felt the reverence of that place, he saw the seraphims shouting, Holy, Holy, Holy. Friends, we are serving a righteous God. The one who called us is a holy God. And that holy God calls us by His grace to make our lives holy in His time. It says here, And He laid upon my mouth and said, Lo, does hot touch my lips, thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin were forgiven. Your sin were forgiven. How good it is to see ministers doing the work of God, having that transform life. It is only when a minister experiences that transform life that they will become a good model to be leader, to, be, to our members and our members will also feel the need of experiencing that close walk with God. There is a saying, like people, like priest. We can only influence our people if we ourselves have experienced the transformation of our life. The second one, Jeremiah is an expression of a willingness to listen and to follow God's instruction. Chapter 7, it says here, verse 7, Thus said the Lord, Go! The Lord said unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou in Shias, she are just so thy son, and at the end of the conduit of the upper pool, in the highway of the fuller's field, and say unto them, Take it, and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint-hearted, for the two tails of the smoking firebrands, for the fierce anger of present, with Syria and of the son of Primalia. Don't be afraid to your enemies. Thus said the Lord God, they shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. One of the best characteristics of God's ministers, of God's servant, is to be willing to listen and follow God's instruction. It is always best for us to be sensitive enough to follow God's leading. And through this experience, Isaiah was able to comfort the discouraged people. They are so discouraged. They were so afraid. But through the instruction and obedience of Isaiah, Doing his part when God commanded him, go and speak to the people. Fear not, for your enemies will not stand. It is always best to follow God's instruction. When I was interviewed by the late president of Northern Luzon Mission, Pastor Larry Fett, his first question to me was, are you willing to be assigned anyway? That was the first question. If we will be giving you a chance to work in Northern Luzon Mission, are you willing to, to be assigned in any place? I told him, Sir, I took ministry 
Because in my heart, I want to go where Jesus go, where Jesus wants me to go. And immediately, he calls the secretary. Without the approval of the exco, you are already. <laughs> Following God's instruction is the best. I was working as a district pastor, enjoyed the ministry in that district. Immediately, there was a call for me to serve Northern Luzon at this college. I'm a little bit hesitant to accept the call because to me, working in the field is my main life. Teaching is my secondary life. But I obeyed the call, except uh, in spite of my inadequacies, I promise God, Lord, if it is your will that I will go and serve Lord of the Son and Finish College, then I will go. Because I believe you will equip me. They gave me Greek and Hebrew for past years already, but I have not taught, I have not, I have not scanned the books, but by God's grace, I was able to teach Greek in Hebrew the first time. Because nobody will teach Hebrew in Greek at that point of time in their life. When I'm doing my life, I learned to love teaching. I learned to love teaching. And I feel that I will spend my life in retirement and love. There's a blessing also in Enlak because in Enlak I was not ready. But once I've been doing teaching, there was a call again to serve Northern Luzon Mission as Ministerial Secretary in the next Executive Secretary. I'm planning to retire at Northern Luzon Mission, but there was a call again coming to EUP. I'm afraid this is university status. <laughs> to be a university instructor, Especially in the College of Theology is a great challenge. For me, position is next. My primary, what is highest for me is teaching in the College of Theology. Yes, that's one of the highest that I consider position that I can consider. Following God's instruction. It is where the people of God were able to face the future with hope. The message of Isaiah, comfort, comfort, comfort my people. In spite of challenges, in spite of difficulties, Isaiah was a powerful instrument of God in giving encouragement to God's people. The third one, Jeremiah is an expression of total Submission to God. The whole book of Isaiah reflects that Isaiah submitted himself to God fully. Like for example, in chapter 8, verse 1 to 2. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great role in right in it with the man's pen concerning my son's box. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Jeberiskaya. And I went unto the prophetess and she conceived Berasa. Then said the Lord to me, Call his name Mahir Shalaspa. What a total obedience, so total submission. This prophet shows as he responded to God's command. Yes, if you will read the whole book of Isaiah, people will strengthen. The Israelites were full of courage. They experienced the life of looking bright in the future because the servant of God. Submitted fully himself. Even 
to the extent of sacrificing her. I was so thankful to Pastor uh, Fernando for giving me this time because my heart and my mind dictates me that I need to go. Losing a very prominent young minister at the age of 22, my son in law to be, met an accident last Tuesday night and died on the spot of a vehicle accident. But young as he is, as he was, I've learned a lot. I have observed his dedication in the ministry. And I hope that this son in law to be will be rewarded when Jesus comes. We assigned him in San Fernando. His brother was with him. And when the ministerial department with their decision to transfer him in Pagunpun, and me serving as the executive secretary, my daughter is not well acquainted with the work yet. And my daughter asked me, you are the executive secretary, Papa. Why did you intervene? That major will not be assigned. In Pagutput, very far. The last town of the Locos Norte, the nearest town of Cagayan. I told my daughter, I was also minister and secretary for seven years. You, who will become future minister's wife, MWF, should plant in your mind that whatever the committee decision will, in, you will be assigned, what the committee wanted you to be assigned, you must follow. Young as he is, he should be trained to follow God's instruction through the committee. And when I was talking with Major, are you going to Pagutput and you will leave your brother? He told me, Papa, I need to go. Because the best place for me is where God wants me to go. I admire that state. I thought in my mind that this son is more mature even sometimes the old minister. Because old ministers sometimes complain when they learn the decision of the executive committee. But this young worker, in spite of having a brother being sponsored by him, Makakalibrinisana ng pagkain dormitory, yung kapatid niya, but he is ready to leave his brother just to follow God in his instruction. To end, I would like to read a statement from Philip Ewan, Acts of Apostles 370.1. God is calling for men who are willing to leave their farms their business, if need to be their families, to become missionaries for him. And the call will be answered. In the past, there have been men who, steered by the love of Christ and the needs of the lost, have left the comforts of the home and the society of friends, even that of wife and children, to go into the foreign lands among idolaters and savages. To proclaim the message of mercy. Many in the attempt have their lost their lives, but others have been raised up to carry on the work. Thus, step by step, the cause of Christ is progress. In the seed sown in sorrow is yielded a bountiful harvest. 
The knowledge of God has been widely extended in the banner of the cross planted in the heavens. The best response when God called is Jeremiah, don't send me. Jeremiah is a response that he wanted God to transform our lives. Jeremiah is an expression of our willingness to hear and follow God's instruction. It is a response. Jeremiah, Lord said me, is a response telling God, God, I am fully submitting my life to you and do what you want me to do. My friends, I want to give the Lord, to give to the Lord the best response. Jeremiah said, our Lord. Father in heaven, thank you for calling us as your sons and daughters. Thank you for calling us to be your workers. We are so thankful, loving God, that this evening we are able to recognize that the one who called us is a holy God. And because he is a holy God, by his rich grace, he wanted to call his people and transform them after his 
because it is only when we are transformed in your image that we will be able to bring our brethren in a closer walk with you. Lord, tonight, help us to be the kind of servant like Isaiah. When you called him, he gave the best response. Lord, there am I. May that spirit will also prevail in our hearts. That wherever you want us to go, we will go. Because the best place for us is the place where God wants, me, wants us to go. Lord, thank you for accepting us and accepting our dedication. Work mightily in our behalf. And lead us closely so that we will experience a life that is pleasing to thy side and a life that will bless men. This is the